Hello, my name is Ron Carpenter. Welcome to the Midwest CAD Training Byte video series. Today we're going to be discussing how to really look at the license file and set up your Autodesk network license file correctly. We're also going to add some commented lines in there so it's easy for us to tell exactly what the data is. And then we're going to look at how to reorder the license data. Because there is a, a specific order that needs to be maintained. The cheaper licenses are going to be at the top. The more expensive licenses will be at the bottom. So we need to make sure that like AutoCAD or our, more, our less expensive licenses will be at the very top of the license file. And then more expensive licenses like the building design suite should be at the bottom. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at the license file itself. Here I have a copy of a license file that I've requested from Autodesk. And again, just as an overview, to request a license file, you have to have a network license of a product. Then you'll need to call the Autodesk activation line, or you can send them an email to authcodes at autodesk.com. And you'll give them the server name, you'll give them the MAC address for the computer, and you'll give them the serial number for the product. They will then email you the license file. Now, if I double-click on the license file here, we're going to see that it opens up in Notepad. Notepad is the recommended procedure and the program to use whenever you're using any kind of modification for the license file. We want to make sure that we use Notepad. Programs such as Microsoft Word or even Microsoft Works or WordPad can add additional information to the license file, which corrupts it. So we want to use a very simple text editor when we're doing this. So in this case, I'm using Notepad. Up here at the very top, we see the server line. This shows us the server that we're using here. We also see the MAC address to the right of that. So as soon as I request the license file, that's usually the first thing I'll do is open it up in the text editor notepad and verify that the server name is correct and then verify that the MAC address is correct. Those two are correct, so I'm now ready to go ahead and move on and modify this a little bit. Now here we see package and increment data and it's kind of set up in groups here. So this first piece of data says package and just to the right of it it says 67700 PNID underscore F. That's a feature code. These feature codes sometimes make sense, sometimes they don't. I can kind of tell already this is PNID but if you're not real familiar with feature codes what I recommend you do is open up an internet browser and then type in Autodesk Feature Codes. Here we see Autodesk Feature Codes located right here. One of the top links is from an Autodesk site, so we'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to show us the 2012 Feature Codes. I'll scroll down here a little bit, and we can see the Feature Codes. So for AutoCAD 2012, the Feature Code is going to have some numbers in front of it, 85730ACD underscore 2012. AutoCAD architecture will have some numbers in front of it, ArcDesk underscore 2012. Now the numbers here, they may be a little different in your license file depending on the product, but the information after it as far as the characters here, ACD or ArcDesk or Civ3D, that information should be the same within the license file. So we could use this document here to help determine what license data that we have. So I'm just going to minimize this for now. Here we have our license data here. So I can tell already that this is going to be PNID 2012. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple lines here at the top, and I'm going to add a commented out line. And in order to do this, I need to use the pound sign because I want to add a description here, which tells me for future reference what this is going to be. So I'm going to use the pound symbol here, and then I can use a space. As long as I use that pound symbol there, the Autodesk Network License Manager will ignore that line. It's not going to try to read that as license data. If I don't use that pound symbol, the License Manager will not be able to read the information correctly, and essentially the license file will be broken at that point. So I'll use the pound symbol there, and then I'm just going to type out the product. So we'll type out Autodesk PNID, like so. Now, let's go ahead and try to determine how many seats we have by looking at this license data. I'm going to go down to increment, the increment line here, 
And we're going to see right here, permanent one. That tells me how many network seats I have available for this product. So right up here, after Autodesk PNID, I'll go ahead and put the year 2012. And then after that, I'm going to put one hyphen seat, like so. And then I'm going to add the pound symbol again. Okay, so I've just added out, added here a commented out line, which commented out means that the Autodesk Network License Manager will not read that line, and it just tells me a description of what the product is and how many seats I have. I'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Here we have our next product under package. There's our feature code, plant 3D. So again, just directly above that, I'll go ahead and add the pound symbol, use a space, and then I'll call this Autodesk Plant 3D. And this is 2012, so I'll go ahead and add the year. And then we'll go down to the increment line, and we'll have a look to see how many licenses we have right here. Permanent 5 is what it's showing us, so we'll go ahead and type in 5 seats, like so. So then I'll use a space create another pound symbol, so I just commented that out. We'll scroll down a little further. Here we have Max Design, 3D Studio Max Design. So I'll add the pound symbol again. Go ahead and type out the description. And then I'll go down to the increment line next that we see here, Permanent 1. So that tells us that we have one network license for this product. So I'll type in one seat, like so. And then I can go down and do the rest here for all the other products. We're not going to go through all those right now. Now, one, one last thing that we're going to look at is the order of the information. Now, I have reordered this license file previously, but we're going to look at how we would do that. Once we get our descriptions in here, here we have PNID 2012, Plant 3D 2012, Autodesk Max 2012, you kind of see a pattern here. The least expensive licenses are at the top. The more expensive licenses down here are at the bottom. So right here, we have a package for building Design Suite Ultimate. So let me just add a, a quick commented outline here. We'll just call this Building Design Suite BDS for short, Ultimate. 2012, we'll go down to the increment here, and we'll see we have two network licenses available. So I'll go ahead and just type in two seats, and then use my pound symbol again. So this is our most expensive license that we have. So we want this at the very bottom. If I needed to reorder these, I could simply select all of the data as a group. And I'll just go ahead and highlight this with a cursor. I'll go ahead and select all the data here. I could then right click on this and select cut. That then removes that data. Here we have another building design suite premium. For example, if I wanted to move the building design suites and change the order of those, I could just go ahead and hit enter here above this data, select the data, and then I'll right click and select paste. That'll go ahead and paste in the building design suite ultimate above the building design suite premium. But that's incorrect. I don't really want to do that because I want the most expensive licenses at the bottom of the file. So we'll go ahead and select that large group of data just using our cursor here. I'll right click and select cut again. Scroll down to the very bottom of the license file and, and click here and then I'll right click and select paste. I'll go ahead and add that Building Design Suite Ultimate 2012 license at the bottom. So we know here that this is our premium. I'll go ahead and add another commented outline here. We'll call this Building Design Suite BDS Premium 2012. And then if I go down to my increment line here, it tells me I have 18 seats, 18 network seats available for this product. So I'll just type in 18 hyphen seats, like so. We'll scroll up a little bit. Here is another package line that we have. 
Navisworks Manage. This is also a 2012 product. We'll go ahead and add our pound symbol here. Call this Navisworks Manage 2012. Oh. Help if I spell that correctly, M-A-N-A-G, 2012. And then we'll scroll down to the increment line again, and we see that there are four network seats available for that. Permanent four is what it says. So we'll just go ahead and four, type in four hyphen seats and use the pound symbol at the end of that. Oh, and here's another line that I did not add the pound symbol behind. So we'll go ahead and add that. Whenever we're making these modifications, it's important to make sure that we have these pound symbols in front of and behind. So I'm going to go through the license file and just verify that pound symbol here and here. We have one here and here. Come down. Here's our Navisworks. Oh, here's one again. We need to add the pound symbol after that, like so. And I have, a, you know, kind of some space in here. I can clean that up and just backspace out some, some, uh, some of those lines just to clean that up. Okay, so our license file is in the correct order. We've added these little descriptors here using the pound symbol. Everything looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and save the file. We'll go ahead and click Save here. And we'll close the file. And this is the file essentially here that's located on my desktop. Now we'll go ahead and open up LM Tools real quick, and I'm going to go through the quick setup of it. Make sure I am using Configure Using Services. Go to my Configure Services tab. I'm going to now browse to the new license file, which will be on my desktop. There's my new file. And we'll go ahead and save this service. Click Yes, Save. We'll go to the Start, Stop, Reread. I'm just going to stop it. It'll say Stopping Server down here in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, but it, it will never say Stopped. So don't, don't really wait on that. Just go ahead and, and verify it says stopping server. Then you can go ahead and click start server. It'll go ahead and start the new server successfully. I'll then go to my server status tab, click on my perform status inquiry button. Here I have verified that I am using the correct license file that's located on my desktop. Scroll down a little bit here, and then we see all of my licenses. Notice that it is reading everything correctly because it shows the feature code here how many licenses you have, and then here it shows how many are in use. So at this point, we can go ahead and close the license manager, leave the server up and running, and now we're ready to go ahead and work throughout the day. Well, again, my name is Ron Carpenter. I hope you've enjoyed this video training series. Thank you.